Okay, here's an example of using the um, half angle formula to find something. So again, if something in trig typically asks for an exact value, you pretty much know you're either going to look at the unit circle or you're going to use some type of bow tie with your ratio. Now, obviously I have an angle here. There's no way to draw um, one of your bow tie triangles because you don't know any of the ratios. So you're kind of out of luck. So this part is not going to help you. So you're like, well, okay, I need the unit circle, but the problem is this is not on the unit circle. And so you're going to start looking at the trig identities that you have kind of in your bag of tricks and decide which one's going to work. So can I add cosine of alpha plus or cosine of alpha plus beta, do something cosine alpha minus beta, what can I do? And so the thing I noticed about eight is that pi over four and eight go together very nicely. And so I look at this and I'm like, oh, well, pi over eight would just be half um, the pi over four angle. And so this guy right up here, right, that angle on top, um, that is my alpha. Um, so right here, I need to change color here. Um, this guy right here is going to be my alpha in the formula. All right. My original angle is still pi over eight, but this guy is the one that is the alpha that's in my formula. And so I get, um, plus or minus. And again, you can either put a question mark, you know, because you don't really know what ink, um, what sign you're going to use, um, square root of, 1 plus cosine alpha. Now in this case my alpha is this guy. It's not your original because you're using the half angle formula and so alpha is pi over 4 and that is all over 2. Right so now you have something that is on the unit circle. So if you come over here that's what square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 over 2. And so you get this question mark on the sign. You have no idea yet. You got to figure it out. 1 plus the square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. Okay, now you're going to get into some algebra. So you need to add here, so you need a common denominator. So that 1, I could make 2 over 2 plus the square root of 2, all over 2. And so that gives me, um, let me make that a little deeper. So that gives me what? Um, the 2 plus radical 2 all over 2, and then I have that other one still there. Okay, and again, the radicals over all of it, so that's in there too. Right now I have a single fraction, single fraction, so I can go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to take this and multiply by the reciprocal. All right, and so when I multiply straight across, I, I get 2 plus square root of 2, and then these are 4. And so then I square root both. So again, I, I still don't know the sign. So there you go. And the square root of that is 2. Okay. All right, so at this point, that's as simplified as I can get it. And again, it's very typical in these problems to have a radical within a radical. That's not unusual at all. In the order of those with the commutative property, that doesn't matter. But the thing is, is we have this question mark. Um, and again, if you want to put plus or minus, that's totally fine. But I need to decide the sign of this. Now, again, this sign has nothing to do with it. You have to go back to the original. Now, it just happens that those are both in the same quadrant. So in this case, it doesn't matter. But usually, you need to go back to the original because it could be that your angle is, say, 90, say 100 degrees. And when you take half of it, it's 50. And so those two angles are in different quadrants. But in this case, um, we know where we're at. Um, pi over 4 is here, right? But that's not the angle we're talking about here. We're talking about pi over 8, which I know exactly where it is. It's in quadrant 1, so everything's positive there. So uh, there's no question mark as to what the sign is. It is definitely positive. So my final answer is there.